show. We got our big five dollars at the end. We gonna put it on the show. When I was thinking about who was going to say a few words, this is the first person that came to mind because he's hardworking, he's caring, he knows you, and you all know him, and he paid me to say all of these things. <laughs> I'd like to bring up and please give a warm, inspired welcome to Professor Jeremy Martin. All right. Uh, can you all hear me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, first off, I want to thank Dr. Dorme. Uh, Audrey was in here and uh, President Sprodden was in here. Students, aspire students, bridge students, uh, ACES students, ARISE students, you can't say that no one here cares about you. You have the president of the college, you have the vice president of the college, you have the associate dean, you have the dean of counseling here, you have the UC Santa Barbara rep. You've had so many people in here to talk to you, and they weren't here just for five minutes. They were here for the first half of the presentation, uh, and they're here to let you know all the things that they hope to see you accomplish and all the ways that they're going to support you. Uh, so thank you all, administrators, for being here. I want to give a special thank you to my 310 brother, Clarence. He's from Inglewood. I'm from Gardena. Inglewood. So, yes, in the house. In the house. Um, we share that other side of the 105 love. And uh, I was so happy when I found out that he was from my side of town. It was like, oh, man, oh, what's, what's up? And we started talking about things that we could relate to, which is what I'm going to talk about today in the presentation. And on the, on the agenda, it said that I was going to present. And I didn't, I didn't want to present. I didn't want to have a PowerPoint or anything like that. I just wanted to talk to you all about some truths that need to go on in the house. And this is the Aspire program. And for a few years, there's some truths that haven't been said and today I want to say them, so is that okay if I tell the truth today? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Church, so you know. <laughs> and the truth that I, I, I hope to talk about, if it's not your truth, that's fine, but maybe it's someone that you know. Maybe it's their truth, and maybe we can help them get through the struggle. Clarence asked me to speak, and I was, I was happy, and I, uh, I said, absolutely, I love this program. It's really important to me to see successful students, especially successful students of color. Uh, a lot of times in the media, we're portrayed as a way, and it's not very positive. But in this room, I, I know all you, well, most of you, and I know so much positivity that's in this room. Whether it's just passing Learn 48, Learn 49, and English 67, that's a positive feeling, and we celebrate it together. So I want you all to give yourselves a round of applause for just this room. <laughs>
says, because I can't relate to it. She said, could you relate to anything in that movie? I said, yeah, I could relate to the whole dang thing. It was like watching high school all over again. She said, really? I said, yeah. I said, mom, we lived in Compton for a while. She said, yeah, but you were young. I said, yeah, but just because we moved the city over doesn't mean some of those problems don't get carried over to the next city over. So I'm explaining to her some of the choices that I had to make on a daily basis, some of the things that we don't tell our parents about as we walk home from school because we don't want them to worry about it or put us on such punishment that we have no freedom. <laughs> so I'm sharing with her some of the things that I, some of the choices that I had to make on a daily basis. And as we were talking, I could tell she started to feel bad. She began to apologize. I said, Mom, no, don't apologize. You did the best that you could with what you had. Don't apologize. I didn't want my mom to feel bad because she was a, she's a great mom. Take her back, actually. <laughs> so she said, yeah, I'm not going to talk about it. I told her, don't apologize. You did the best that you could with what you had. And I, I think I'm pretty successful, and I'm, I'm OK. I made it through. So that conversation kind of came back to me. and. I also thought about a couple of weeks ago, I was on this thing called Facebook, this prehistoric thing that you guys are going to be don't use anymore. You guys use Instagram and Vine and all that stuff that I can't figure out. Uh, I saw a friend of mine, I saw his little brother on Facebook, so I'm clicking on pictures. I haven't seen his little brother in a long time. I'm clicking on his pictures. I'm like, oh man, what's Mike up to? Clicking, clicking, clicking. I see a picture of Mike. Mike, swole, down 13 years. So I do a little investigating. My friend Mike, that I grew up with, played t ball with, and the Boy Scouts with. I have both parents in the house. That's like a luxury in the hood. You have both, right? Since it's 55 years, 13 years ago. Wow. So I'm looking at it, I'm like, man. So then I click on another picture because I'm trying to catch up with him. And I see another friend of mine, Keith, and rest in peace. And I knew Keith had passed away about three years ago. He was murdered. I played T ball with Mike. Keith lived in my apartment building. And I'm thinking to myself, man, so I'm. I'm not supposed to be here because these are the same people that I was running with. How, how am I here and they're not? I'm not, I'm, how, how is that possible? So I'm, I'm thinking back to my mom's conversation. I'm having this whole conversation with myself in my head, driving down fit, you guys. So I go to USC, so I start out, and I'm taking 110 all the way until you get to uh, El Segundo, I got on. So I'm, I'm driving, I'm thinking about my friend, I'm thinking about the movie, and me and my mom's conversation. And then I think back to how the choices that I made on a daily basis provided me with the path that did not get me incarcerated, that did not get me shot. And sometimes, and as I told my mom, she said, how did you do like that? I said, sometimes it was luck. Just not being at the wrong place at the wrong time. The Lord above saying, you know, I have a different plan for you. So I started to think about how I would make good choices Every day, and I'm going to tie this to a spire, but I'm just, I'm going to tell you guys about my, 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 my thoughts. And those of you who take my class, I don't know I tell a lot of stories. <laughs> so I'm, I'm thinking about the choices that I've had, and I, I'm thinking about how I can, I can tie this in to this program today. And what Clarence talked about with success and how you all should achieve something, that really hit home for me as I sat down there, and I, and I, just, jotted, <clears throat> I just jotted down some notes. And I wanted to bring something to your attention over the last few months, actually, unfortunately, over the last few years. The term Black Lives Matter has gotten a lot of publicity, gained a lot of steam. Black Lives Matter. So my question to you as FIRE students, and not as FIRE students, and faculty members, my question to you is, Black Lives Matter, now what? Now what? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Because we're all blessed with the gift of gab. We are, because we know how to change our voice. And hey, how you doing, Jeremy? We're a pleasure to meet you. But we don't change our habits. We change that voice, but we don't change our habits. And when we get in the classroom and we change our voice, and we think that the teacher's going to just pass us because we've changed our voice, but we haven't changed our habits, we're surprised when we don't pass the class. Is that hit home? Anybody? A little bit? So another thing that I'm, I'm thinking about is how we set goals and we don't follow through. We see all these protests. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this. After a few months, they're gone. After a few weeks sometimes, they're gone. So let me tie this into the Aspire program. And again, I didn't want to have a fancy PowerPoint. So 
So I just did this. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see. If you have something to write with, feel free to write this down. Because it gets better. Clarence and I often talk about the state of black students in higher education. Now, what I feel that the Aspire program can do for you, and what I know that the Aspire program can do for you, if you allow it to, is A, allow you to achieve. Whether it's achieving the goal of transferring, whether it's achieving the goal of improving your math skills or your, your writing skills, we have the resources right here for you. Through counseling, through workshops, through tutoring, we can help you achieve. A. S. Self. Remember I told you all how good it felt to know that Clarence came from Inglewood because I could relate to him. I, I told, I literally let my guard down when I found out that he was from Inglewood High and actually went to Sarah, which is in Cartier. And I was, oh cool. So you'll be around people that you can relate to because as Audrey, Dr. Yamagata Noji asked you all, sometimes you feel like you're the only one in the class and you really can't talk to anybody the way you really want to talk to. You spend most of your energy pretending to be somebody else. You don't even have any energy to learn. Anybody ever do that? Sometimes I'm tired at work because I don't talk like this at home, believe it or not. <laughs> so, self. P, passion. We're going to encourage your passion. Whatever your passion is. And Clarence said it beautifully. I know your mom, your dad, your cousin, everybody are nice people. But I want to know what's your passion. Because your passion is going to be the thing that push you, pushes you through that Math 71 class in November. In November. When the school looks like the thriller video and everybody's just walking around <laughs> like this. Your passion is going to be the thing that gets you to that campus tour on Friday. Your passion is what's going to drive you. You cannot be successful in college if you're following someone else's passion. So Clarence, myself, anyone that works in this fire program, we're going to encourage you to follow your passion. Last, well not last, but I, independent. Independent. I want you to be independent. I want you to be successful not only here at Mount Sac, but I want you to be independent at UCLA, Santa Barbara, Cal State Fullerton. Sometimes we can go outside of our neighborhood, and i got friends like this too, and you might, you might also. We can't function. Sometimes we go outside of Mount Sac, and we can't function. Jeremy's not here to help me. So you can text me, and I'll tell you, go do counseling. Go do financial aid. Ask a question. We're going to encourage you. We're going to demand that you learn how to be independent. Now, we're here to support you. But as Clarence said, I want to teach you how to fish. I don't want to bring you to fish every day. So we want you to be independent. Now, the last two letters, I kind of doubled up because they were so good. <laughs> Respect and remember. I want you to respect and remember where you came from and where you want to go. And respect all the work that has to go on in between. Respect the work, because it's just not going to happen. Respect where you came from. Every, not every day, but once a week. I make it a point to get off the 110 freeway near Rosecrans, because that's where I grew up. And I take the street up to go to school. Because I want to remember and I respect the work that I did to give myself the ability to go back, to give back, and not be stuck, and not be stagnant, because no one likes to be stagnant, no one would like to be stuck. The last letter, E, expectation of excellence and no excuses. Yeah. Now it's fitting that it's my mother's birthday, because my mother used to always tell me there's nothing worse than a man with excuses. Yeah. Man, you what were you woman? <laughs> 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 we, I don't, I want you guys to think time is an issue, but you can fail, and you can try again. Yes. Don't make the excuse and say, oh, I tried, I'm not going to do it again. Say that again, John. <laughs> you can fail, but you can try again. Yes. There's not an excuse, oh, I failed, I tried. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You know how many great people that we respect and admire? both in sports, politically, musically, that failed their first time out, but they kept trying, they made it happen. No excuses. Which I bring, I was gonna bring me to, and you guys see how that works better than the PowerPoint, right? <laughs> Would bring me to one of the ladies 
And I thought, I was like, man, how am I going to close this out? How's it look? Because I've been kind of hard on you guys a little bit. But I told you, I want to tell some truths because some of these things needed to be addressed to the inspired students. I want to tell you all about a lady that inspired me right off of Rosecrans Avenue, off the 110 freeway. Every day, I would get home from my master's degree program. I was a substitute teacher and either Inglewood, Norwalk, or Hawthorne Unified, who depended on who called me that day. And I would go to school at night. And I would get off, my class would get out at seven, and I would exit Rosecrans Avenue, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, you can exit Rosecrans, there's a Chevron station, Norman Casino right there. There's a little lady, a little Hispanic lady, selling flowers. Selling flowers. Hot, selling flowers. Cold, jacket, selling flowers. Rain, selling flowers. Every day, and every day I thought off the freeway, I was complaining about life. I was like, man, I'm broke. I gotta pay my rent. I'm gonna be, I gotta get to Costco again, because the hot dogs are about 50. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I'm tired of a cup of noodles, I'm complaining. And then I would see her, and I would see everything that she was doing that I just explained, and not making any excuses for it. Weather, no problem. She was out there by herself. She was being independent. So then, all of a sudden, she started growing. Tell me. She gets big. I was belly out to here. Getting really big. So it's an everyday thing pretty much through the week for me. So I'm saying, I'm like, man, when she's going to have a baby, she's going to have a baby. She was gone for a day. A day. Stroller, flowers. <laughs> I went back a couple years. I graduated, started working out here at a local high school. Went back a couple, a couple years. Flowers, little kid running around. I see coloring books right there next to the 7-Eleven. Little kid is playing coloring. Are you kidding me? That's my role model. That's my role model. Not somebody on Instagram that get a whole bunch of likes. That's my role model. Someone that's in my community. Someone that can inspire me to do it no matter what. Whether I'm expecting a child, whether it's hot, or whether the child is right here next to me. Because we're good for excuses, and we have been good for excuses in this program. And I'm so glad that Clarence is here now because he and I have that same mentality where excuses don't cut it, you guys. We have all the resources here. And if you fail, so what? We'll think of a plan to, come, uh, to get over that wall, go through that wall the next time. I want to leave you guys with this. I'm not supposed to be here, is what I thought. I am supposed to be here to encourage you, to encourage you, to encourage you, to encourage you, to encourage you. I'm a little black boy from Linwood, Gardena, California. Gardenwood, Gardena. I never thought I would be a doctoral student at USC. I never thought that I would be at a college talking to students. But since I had all these values instilled into me by my mother, I'm here. So where are you all going to go? Thank you very much.